Hello, welcome to Furry Friend Zone, your cat and dog destination. My name is Mackenzie, and in today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you everything you need to know before you pick a dog crate. So let's jump into it. Okay, so the first crate I'm gonna talk about is probably the most common crate that people think of when they think of a crate and that they usually buy at a pet store, which is a wire crate. So I'll put a picture of what it looks like right here. And these ones have um, their wire, usually black wiring all the way around. They come with usually two doors. So one will be on the one, like the front of it and one will be on the side. They come with a lock depending on the brand that you pick. Some will actually have like a, a two safety lock. So you'll have to slide it over and then lift it up. And then some just have the sliding over. It also comes with a plastic tray. So if your dog pees in it, it's easy to just take out the tray and clean it. And then it also does collapse. So it like will totally fold down so that you can move it around if you have to. One thing I will note with the moving them though, they don't, like they're not that great. They're not that portable. Like I've moved mine a couple times and like the parts that clip it together, they'll just start to get a little wobbly and they won't hold together the more you're like breaking it down and putting it back up. So if you are looking for a crate that you're just gonna keep in one spot, it's great for that. It does come in a number of sizes and how I'm gonna kind of explain how the sizing works and what you need to be thinking about if you're buying this type of crate. So if you're buying this type of crate for your puppy, what we typically tell people to do is you wanna buy the crate for the size of the dog when it's full grown. So a lot of people will come in and be like, oh, I need to get a small one. No, you need to get the full size one. And then what it, this one, the metal one actually comes with is a divider. So I'll put a picture up right here of what it looks like with the divider. And so you put the divider up in it and your dog should be able to stand up, turn around, lay down, and you don't wanna give them too much room where they can go and pee in a spot and then lay in, in another spot because then that makes potty training a lot more difficult. So that is usually the easiest way to kind of size the crate. And then as they gradually get bigger and bigger, you just kind of move the divider to the point where you don't need the divider anymore and the dog just fits in the crate fully. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the sizes of the crates. So, and I also have some notes here on the breeds that usually are most commonly associated with those sizes. So there's an 18 inch, a 24 inch, a 30 inch, a 36, 42, and a 48 inch. And they also do have 54 inch, but that one is not as popular. And generally, um, I know from experience, you have to special order that one because they don't carry it as often in stores. But I'm gonna look down now and I'm gonna go through the sizes and the breeds. So. Generally, for an 18 inch, it would probably, the only breed that would fit in there would be a Chihuahua, because it's pretty tiny. The next size would be a, um, a Shih Tzu, um, what else did they have on here? A Shih Tzu, a Yorkie, um, a Westie, a Miniature Poodle, a Toy Poodle. So those are, you can kind of gauge the size from that. The next size, the 30 inch, is more like a, a Spaniel, um, a, uh, a beagle, a smaller like Staffordshire Terrier. And then for the 36 inch, that one, they have like a Bull Terrier, Dalmatian, um, Australian, uh, uh, Australian Shepherd. And then the 42 inch would be like a Boxer, um, an American Bulldog, a, an Alaskan Malamute, which I don't, I think that would be too small for them. Uh, the 48 inch is um, usually a German Shepherd a greyhound, uh, a standard poodle. And I don't know if you guys have seen previous videos with my dog Fred in them, but he's a Rottweiler Mastiff and I put him in a 48 inch crate and he has lots of room to lay down. Like sometimes I'll even put a picture actually. It's super, uh, super, super cute. Um, my other dog Ava will go in and they'll lay in it together. So I'll put the picture up here. So as you can see, there's lots of room in the crate um, for them to like be totally comfortable and relaxed and have lots of room to spread out. And then the 54 inch is generally for like a Irish Wolfhound, a Mountain Dog, a Bull Mastiff, a Great Dane, a Great Pyrenees. So the really, really big breed. So those usually will take up a lot of room. So I hope that size guide kind of helped you and you can use this size guide when thinking about even the travel crates or the soft sided crates because they are, the sizing is, uh, throughout all the types of crates. And some other things just to, to point out about the wire crate, um, the price point is generally pretty good. You can get these often on sale, so always look out for that. 
You can also find them a lot of the time. Like I got Fred's off of Kijiji, which now most people use Marketplace, but um, yeah, you can get them like, cause a lot, what a lot of people will do with them is they'll just use them when they're a puppy and then once they're full grown, they don't use the crate anymore. So definitely check on there. You can get a pretty good price on it. And I will say like crate training and crates, some people are all for them and some people totally dislike them. I personally think that they are great. My dogs all love them. I would leave it open and have it all comfy with tons of blankets and a dog bed and they would just go and chill in there. It was kind of their safe space and I mean I didn't I didn't most of the time even lock them in there they just had like a space that was theirs that they could go to and uh, with Fred's crate I will say it does take up quite a bit of room so he doesn't use a crate anymore but it is a great tool for training or even if you like rescue an older dog and you know it kind of just gives them they know that spot in the house is theirs and they feel secure in it another feature I wanted to mention with the wire crates that does um, can be seen as a big benefit to using those crates in the home is um, you can buy X pens, which I'll, post, I'll put a picture of one right here. It's just like basically another enclosure and you can get different heights of it. You can actually connect the X pen to the wire crate. So some people, you know, if they have to go away f um, or they're, they're working for the day or whatever and they can't be with their dog, they don't want their dog to be locked in the crate the whole time. So they will make it so that the dog can go outside into the X pen. It's still confined, but it gives the dog more space and you can put a pee pad down and have toys and their water and everything. I'll put a picture actually of what it looks like with it up here. So that's another great thing about the wire crates is because there's actually clips that come with it um, with the X pen that you can connect it together. All right, so the next crate is a travel crate. So I'll put a picture of what it looks like here. And these are most commonly used for if, you know, traveling in the car, if you're going to a vet appointment, if, you know, you're actually flying. I will say with the flying though, you wanna make sure that the crate is up to the standards of the airline because I have heard some in instances where, you know, they buy a crate and it didn't meet the criteria that the airline had set for the crate. So make sure you check for that. Um, they usually come with wheels. They'll have one door. So just like a front door that will have metal on it. And generally the whole crate is plastic. It'll have two side little windows that have the uh, wire metal on it as well. And they generally come in two parts. So you'll sometimes they'll have like the top half of the crate is one color and the bottom is another. And so that's how you can screw it together. So if you do need to take it apart, it's easy to do that as well. Um, some crates, if you have a smaller dog, um, or even for cats actually, they'll have like a top part that will open. So if you're traveling with your dog on a plane, you can at least open it and touch your dog or be with your dog. But these are great for traveling. They are quite bulky. So it depends on where you're putting it, if it can take up a lot of space. And their sizing works the same as the um, metal wire crates. Sometimes the numbering will be different, but if you actually look on the label, it'll the same size guide will be the same for the travel ones as they will for the metal ones. Now for training, I don't really recommend a travel crate because it doesn't come with a divider. So if you're, you know, you're buying it for your dog, your dog has to go in the whole thing. I mean, I have heard some people will actually put up like cardboard or something because they want their dog to be in a more secure um, crate that they feel more cozy in. Totally personal preference, um, but I, I do find that it's really best for traveling. Like if you're going to the co like the cottage or, you know, you need to go somewhere where your, your dog needs to be confined, then I would go with that one, but total, totally personal preference. But if you're in the house, I would, I would usually go with the wire crate. All right, so the last type of crate is the soft-sided dog crate. So I will put a picture again of what that looks like. These tend to be more pricey and in my head when I think of these crates I think of like camping because they kind of look like you know they have the canvas material on them um, they have a softer bottom they do collapse as well and they can they come in a bag like a, a, a bag with a zipper so which is great for you know if you're traveling around as well it does have the sides where you can actually um, have them down so it's all enclosed or you can put them up and then there's like a meshing so if people are camping or whatever and they want their dog to be in there but they can still see out and they're not being you know eaten alive by bugs so that's a great one it also has a top so you can pull the top open as well um, one thing I do find with these ones is they are more on the pricey side their sizing does work the same it's across the board the sizing works the same so 
but this one does not come with the divider so again like the travel one the size is what the size is you can't split it up I, I wouldn't use this one as like a, a daily um, crate if your dog is fully trained then it totally can work but it it is all washable but there's more like it's it's harder to clean than up the plastic ones if your dog pees or poos in it and then also too it can get like show more wear more quickly but it's definitely like a great alternative if you don't want to go with the wire crate and if you're traveling a lot and going camping or doing things like that it's definitely a great alternative also too does have pockets it depends on the one you get but some will have like pockets on the side so you can put things in it and it does fully collapse as well for smaller breeds they also do have like the handle ones that most commonly people will put cats in but they have it for dogs as well that'll it will be like they'll have a handle They'll be soft um, on the inside it's the same canvas material they have the zippers so you can get that um, in the soft one for smaller dogs as well usually it's just in a different style and section in a pet store than the the bigger soft-sided crates okay so i hope that explanation helped on each type of crate and what i did want to also explain is each type of crate is going to be dependent on what you're looking for in a crate so some people only want a crate that they just want to leave at home others need it for travel others want it for more the camping so it totally depends and that's going to help you determine what's best for you and your dog and what your dog is most comfortable in and i mean some people have two of them or all even all three depending on their lifestyle so totally pick what's the best option for you remember that all the sizes is universal if you go to a pet store bring your dog they usually have some sample ones that you can try see how your dog fits in it if you're comfortable with it remember they should be able to stand up turn around and lay down and then go from there and a lot of places do have it that you can bring them home test it out if your dog totally hates the crate there's lots of you know training tips that you can do um, to help with getting your dog used to a crate but if ultimately you decide that either it's the wrong size you need a bigger one or a smaller one or you don't like that style you can usually bring it back. They usually have like a, war a return policy of 30 days. Sometimes it's more than that if you're just doing an exchange. So just get what's most comfortable for you, what's best for your lifestyle, and what your dog feels the most comfortable in. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please be sure to give this video a like and a subscribe if you're not already and leave any comments you have down below. I'm happy to answer them. I also wanted to let you guys know that we started a Facebook community group called Furry Friend Zone and we would love for you guys to join it and post pictures of your pets, ask us any questions you have and we just really look forward to growing this community with you guys. So I hope you have an amazing day. I will talk to you guys soon. Bye for now.